What do you do when the seemingly all-encompassing uh, Russia investigation and the wilderness of mirrors reflected in it encompasses you in the course of your daily life and work in journalism? Our next guest actually had to live through that experience. I thought he handled it extraordinarily well. Uh, full disclosure, uh, Jeffrey St. Clair is an investigative journalist, writer, and the editor of Counterpunch, where I myself have been published. So that's, consider that your conflict of in interest notice. And Jeffrey wrote recently about uh, the interesting and strange case of a contributor named Alice Donovan. Uh, so first of all, Jeffrey, thanks for coming on the program. Hey, it's a pleasure to be here. Well, uh, it's great to have you under unusual circumstances, though it may be. Um, so the question is this. Uh, first of all, who, or to your knowledge, what do you know about this person called Alice Donovan, and how did she become a story for you to write about? Well, uh, Alice Donovan presented herself to Counterpunch and about a dozen other websites, uh, some on the left, some on the libertarian right, as a young freelance journalist. Um, she showed up in our inbox back in February of uh, 2016. And uh, we passed on a couple of her stories and then ran a fairly straightforward kind of newsy story about uh, ransomware hacking in uh, the spring of 2016. And uh, she continued submitting. That was the only story we ran during the, uh, during the election year. And uh, then she showed up again on Counterpunch in the spring of 2017 with some very short, but I thought valuable stories on Syria. And these were at the time when Trump had launched his cruise missile strikes. Uh, it was his first uh, really active belligerence uh, on the uh, foreign policy uh, scene. And uh, the, the pieces were, I think, you know, fairly moderate in tone. Um, they were several of them basically kind of rewrites of pieces that had appeared in Reuters or uh, Argent France Press. Um, and then we ran, we ran, I think, three of those, and then another piece later in the year on Venezuela. That was that was it, as far as we were concerned. Um, and then bizarrely, she came, she re-entered our lives when, in late November, I got a telephone call from Adam Intus, who uh, was then the national security reporter for the Washington Post, and has now transited to the New Yorker. And Adam said, hey, I've got a weird question to ask you about one of your contributors. Um, and we've gotten an FBI report saying that a person named Alice Donovan um, is likely a fictitious persona with some kind of link to Russia. Um, and the FBI report had noted a story without citing where it was published called Cyber War, a challenge for the new century. And he said, I had done a Google search and seen that this article had appeared on Counterpunch. And I was really flummoxed uh, because number one, I didn't remember the article. And number two, I didn't, you know, the name Alice Donovan had a kind of faint ring in my head, but uh, not a very clear one. Um, just to put some context, we we published four of her pieces over an 18-month period, and we published 5,000 articles a year. So, you know, it wasn't, I mean, my memory is fading a little bit, but uh, that's the context for that. So I told into, uh, well, actually, the first thing I did was, you know, check the counterpunch archive and, you know, well, there she was, you know, and we had indeed run the cyber warfare piece and four others. Um, and I said, and, look, I don't, and you know, Jeffrey, I can't tell you anything about her right now because, uh, you know, I don't know anything, you know, let me investigate and I'll get back to you. 
And yeah. And Jeffrey, let me just point, we went. Let me just interrupt for a second and say, um, you know, uh, for, that I'm trying to put myself in sort of empathize, identify with you at getting this call. And, and I think it's worth taking a, a brief break to talk about the Russia investigation. I, uh, the, the fact is, this has been uh, the talk, is, it seems like all that some Democrats talk about, have talked about for the past year is the Russia investigation. Uh, I assume that uh, if the investigation turns something up substantively about Trump and or the election, that oligarchy and money will have more to do about it than anything else. But I also have observed during this process how both uh, the National Security Democrats and uh, national security advocates, meaning for the national security establishment in the, in the media, mainstream media, and potentially those in the intelligence community as well, as well as James Clapper's report at the end of the Obama administration, all somehow took what I assume at, at worst case is a story of oligarchical money and influence crossing borders and turned it into an attack on the left. And the reason why I bring this up, I don't know if you agree with that conclusion or not, but if I were in your shoes at this moment, I would feel all of a sudden like I'd been catapulted into uh, piloting an F-16 through enemy fire, that uh, it's a multi-dimensional uh, maze I'm trying to navigate here of getting to the truth, of wanting to be responsible editorially and, and, and certainly knowing the idea, as well as curiosity, but at the same time, I would have some concern about, I've seen a pattern of demonizing the left inappropriately in connection with this Russia story. And so I would feel a lot of concern at the same time. So I'm curious to know, first of all, if you agree with my context in general, and secondly, if that had a, 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 any relationship to the way you reacted when you got this call. Well, yeah, of course. I mean, I, I think the, the, the Russia gate, whatever that is, has turned into a kind of, uh, it is a political force all of its own. It's reached almost, I think, hysterical uh, proportions. Uh, there's that a kind of familiar shiver to the to the air, you know, as some of the darkest chapters of the Cold War era began to reassert themselves. Um, and interestingly, it's coming largely from, you know, I guess you would call the liberal uh, establishment, uh, the Democrats who are anxious uh, eager, desperate to find some kind of explanation for uh, Trump's victory, which doesn't uh, reflect uh, harshly on their own candidate and their their own uh, incompetence politically, and the national security establishment, uh, I think, which distrust and despises uh, uh, Trump and is uh, uh, has always, of course, uh, you know, wanted to maintain the budgets that go along with uh, a cold war against uh, against Russia. So certainly that was that was there. Uh, it was obvious to me, you know, when when he mentioned Russian troll, you know, a shiver did go down my spine um, that we were going to be thrust into this, you know, very, uh, very fraught spotlight. But, you know, we had to, you know, we had to get to the bottom of it. And uh, as a result, you know, we followed Alice down the rabbit hole for the next three, three weeks trying to figure out what the hell had gone on. And, you know, by the way, uh, and you wrote about it in a piece, Go Ask Alice. Uh, and, and parenthetically, before you go on with the story, you mentioned, uh, I had the same reaction before I even read your piece. I read about Alice Donovan. And uh, I had the same reaction. I thought of Wild Bill Donovan, the founder of the OSS. Was her name right. some, some? Was this pseudonym <laughs> somehow a tribute? Were we in a, this sort of hall of mirrors where you know it was a silent nod to the father of modern American intelligence? Um, so, but anyway, but so you 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 set out on a mission to to find out the truth about Alice Donovan, right? We did, and and uh, you know, we're still digging, actually. But you know, we put we put a solid month into my co-editor Joshua Frank and I 
of really just uh, following every every trail down every hall of mirrors into into every weird swamp. It took us into some of the I think ranker you know subdivisions of uh, of the internet uh, where you've got you know we learned a lot about trolls how they're created uh, how you know stories like this spread across the net. Um, and, uh, it, it was very weird. I think, uh, what started originally with that sort of, you know, uh, with a lot of anxiety on our part, uh, it, I think in the end, it, it sort of, I, I, I come to look at it as a kind of, uh, a comical farce, you know, mm. that, uh, uh, after all, uh, this this entity, you know, Alice, uh, who is who the Washington Post, when their story finally came out uh, a month month later, came out on Christmas Day. Um, the headline was Kremlin trolls, you know, fire across the the internet. Well, the only troll that they talked about was Alice Donovan, um, and this is a an entity which had a, a grand total of forty seven Twitter followers. Um, you know, we call her Alice of the 47 Twitter followers and just a, a, an incredibly insignificant, uh, identity and writer and presence. Uh, she, I mean, we looked at every story that, uh, she was able to get published on the net. There were 28 of them spread across, uh, basically a two year period. And you would think if this was a, you know, a, a Russian operative, that they would be putting the entire force of the Russian, you know, the famous Russian troll farms uh, uh, to work promoting these stories. Well, there was no evidence of that at all, as, as like on her Twitter page, you know, um, I think she had like, you know, 28 posts on her Twitter page. Yeah. The stories a... weren't picked up by Russian media. Uh, you know, they weren't mentioned on Sputnik or RT, who you know who have become the great uh, uh, you know bugaboos of of of, of the uh, of Russia Gate. Um, they just kind of sat there and they had their very modest audience. Um, so that was curious. And then when we began to dig into the stories, um, we found you know something that we probably should have caught as editors. Um, and that was that at least two of her stories for us had been pilfered from other writers. Hmm. Um, now, there's an interesting aspect to that in that they were the stories that she plagiarized were published on the very same day that her pieces showed up on Counterpunch. Um, this whole different weird aspect of this story. Hmm. But we looked at, at the pieces that she had also published, you know, on other sites. And, you know, found that she was ripping off lead paragraphs from The Guardian, which is very bad trade craft for a troll, I think, because it seems like, you know, sooner or later, that kind of brazen journalistic kleptomania is going to be outed um, and you're going to be exposed, which, you know, eventually, you know, we did in our story. Um, but uh Yes, yeah, so very, very strange. Yeah, so, uh, but, you know, it, 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 so you're continuing your investigation, I assume, into uh, the Alice Donovan mystery, which is fascinating. But so it seems to me for now, Jeffrey, say clear that, that there are a couple takeaways. One is that a lot of the uh, um, excitement, shall we say, in the mainstream media uh, about the Russia story, uh, what, what, that there are genuine mysteries, as with uh, Alice Donovan, but that it seems, first of all, there's no clear evidence that she's a Kremlin troll. I mean, I, 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 I'm not sure. I've seen stories about Kremlin trolls where there may be some evidence that the source is Russian or, or, or Slavic, uh, from a Slavic language, or. But but so there are often leaps of faith that that Russian or, or, or Russian code equates to Kremlin. Uh, but even leaving all that aside, it, it's her identity hasn't been fixed. Her um, 
her uh, connection with the Kremlin hasn't been fixed. She was the only person mentioned in this story uh, in the Washington Post with that headline. So it seems to me there's a kind of amplification or lack of verification going on well, on the one hand. <laughs> uh, on the other hand, yeah, there's, right? Uh, um, yeah, uh, there's lack of verification on both sides. We couldn't verify that she was Alice Donovan. They can't verify she's a Russian troll. I mean, um, she's a master of the opaque. Yeah, so in the minute, I, I guess what I'm trying to get to in, in the minute we have left is whether uh, there's any conclusion that, that can be drawn about the, because I, I really like the way as a responsible, independent, journalistic outlet, left outlet, but committed to, you know, uh, journalistic values, which is extremely rare among some of our, let's say, liberal you know, MSNBC crowd for its dedication to do, getting it right, um, that uh, I thought you handled it really well. But going forward, is there a sense of, is there, are there one or two principles we can glean from this as to how we should conduct ourselves? Obviously, we always want to get to the truth. And if the cru truth points to the Kremlin, okay, the truth points to the Kremlin. We want to know that. Um, but is there any other principle we should be deriving from all of this? Well, I, you know, I think for, for our site, and we, we've always been a wide open site. We don't pu just publish journalists. We publish activists. We publish prisoners. We publish homeless people. Occasionally, we even publish lawyers and ex-politicians, you know. Um, so, but after being burned like this by one of your writers who, you know, who would not uh, help us verify her identity and, you know, who, you know, turned out to commit one of the greatest crimes of a journalist, which is plagiarism, it, it it had, you know, we're much, we're more cautious, and we we've, we've started, you know, asking, you know, uh, new contributors, and in, in particular to, you know, to verify their identity, and you know, in in new ways, you know, so can't just do it with a telephone number. A lot of our our writers, you know, are submitting from overseas, and but yeah, so it has it has, you know, had uh, served as a, again a little bit of an inhibiting factor for us and where it's kind of um but you know we have to plunge forward you know we have to uh you know not be gun shy i think uh but at the same time be a little bit uh more demanding of of uh, some of our writers so yeah a a a and uh let me, please do me a favor as you go forward i think those principles make a lot of sense for what you guys do, and I, I as you know, uh, I'm a big admirer of Counterpunch. I read it a lot. I don't agree with every single person there, but you have multiple points of view there, so that's bound to be the case. Right. And um, and uh, I am going to follow the Alice Donovan story and whatever you dig up with great interest. So Jeffrey St. Clair, author of a number of great books and co-editor of uh, Counterpunch, uh, thanks for being so forthcoming in your writing about Alice Donovan, and thanks for coming on the program.